I, I know the rest of Canada doesn't consider this cold or snowy, but I'm sorry that it's a snowy, cold morning, at least from my, my Southern American perspective. Uh, I'm Larry Alford. I'm the Chief Librarian at the University of Toronto, and I want to welcome you uh, to this first Canadian Archive Summit. It's been organized, and I've, I've already apologized once, but I don't speak French, so I'm not going to say this in any proper way, but the Association des Archivistes du Quebec. Did I even get close? Uh, but, but, but again, it's the, the, they're one of the organizers, also the Association of Canadian Archivists, the Canadian Council of Archives, and of course, Ian Wilson, uh, the former librarian and archivist of Canada, whose initiative this was. I, I had invited me to a lunch, uh, I don't know, it was eight or nine months ago, and, and in the lunch hit me up uh, for the University of Toronto to help sponsor this, and I was delighted it was an expensive lunch, but I was delighted to be able to have lunch with him and actually to help sponsor this. So, so Ian, thank you very much for all you've done to help make this a reality. Larry. Um, yes. So there are lots, all of you are special guests and I can't introduce every one of you and I'm sure many of you know each other. There are two people I actually do want to acknowledge though. Uh, the first is uh, Mrs. Sonia Bada who is sitting down here in the front. Uh, if you have not been to the Bada Shoe Museum, which is, which is about a block and a half from here, uh, it is an extraordinary place, and, and we're delighted that you've been able to join us today. Uh, and also Chad Gaffield, the president of Shirk, who has joined us. Uh, I think he said that, or somebody told me, that on a snowy day, this is the first time he's been out after a hip replacement. Uh, so thank you as well for braving the elements to be here. So the meeting is being broadcast in French and English uh, to more than 300 people at 28 locations across the country. So I also want to welcome all of them to, to, the, to the webcast. It is the first step in an innovative initiative by the Canadian Archives community and its public users to plan the future of the archive system, including over 800 archives across Canada. The theme is towards a new blueprint for Canada's recorded memory, a national, regional, and online discussion. And again, welcome to our online participants. This is the beginning of a national discussion about issues the archival community is facing regarding funding and new digital technologies, the preservation of our cultural heritage, and the preservation of the born digital heritage that we also have to face, face preserving for future generations. Uh, there are critical issues that we must address and find solutions for together. I believe, some of you have heard me say this a number of times, I believe deeply in, in the role and mission of libraries and archives to preserve for the future the record of the past, the cultural and the historical record. I really do think it is one of the most important things, activities one generation does for another, and then the next, and then the next. And I believe our unborn great-great-grandchildren will judge us on our success or failure uh, at preserving the record, the record in a time of turbulent change in information. So our present is, is their past, and we, we have an obligation, I believe, to make sure that they understand their past. Uh, to quote Arthur Dowdy, the second Dominion archivist, quote, of all national assets, archives are the most precious. They are the gift of one generation to another, and the extent of our care of them marks the extent of our civilization, end quote. Uh, many years ago, about probably 15, 16 years ago, when I was at the University of North Carolina, we began an early digital project, a sort of curated boutique project to, to preserve, or to digitize, rather, the extant copies of what are known as slave and ex-slave narratives. Uh, that, that essentially document the, the terrible period of American slavery. Um, and we found, in some cases, there were only two or three extant copies of those books, but we managed with the partnership of libraries across actually the United States, Canada, and Europe to find a copy of every single known copy and, and create a, a digital database of those texts. But what was really compelling were the letters we got from people literally around the world who were the descendants of many of the African Americans who endured slavery, uh, who had not read these narratives of their ancestors. And, and uh, the, the, the letters, I can't tell you how compelling those letters were. Um, those were about books, but I think it's also important to make archival collections as widely as accessible as possible as we tried to do with those narratives. We're living in an exciting time in which digital digitization affords us unprecedented opportunities to open up access to these treasures and also to aid in their preservation. 
Uh, although digitizing rare and archival material can expose them to some risk, uh, and I understand that through handling and image capture, I believe that some limited risk is reasonable if it results in much wider access and long-term preservation, but a case-by-case -case analysis must be done. We must respect the materials entrusted to us while finding ways to open up the cultural and historical record as widely as possible. Um, as many of you know, we have partnered in the, the uh, University of Toronto Libraries with the Internet Archive to digitize some 450,000 public domain books uh, that are now available to the entire world and free to users. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that they will be able to develop some, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got something in my throat. Let me, let me grab some water. <coughs> I apologize. Uh, I'm hopeful that the Internet Archive will develop capacity to be able actually to digitize archives as they have done books uh, so, that, so that, again, in partnership with libraries uh, uh, across Canada, uh, we, can, we can expose and open up our archival collections in the way that we have tried to do with much of our print collections. Uh, one of the things that drew me, <coughs> I'm sorry, to the University of Toronto Libraries was his incredible special and archival collections, from the fabulous manuscript materials in the Thomas Fisher R Rare Book Library, to the rich history of our institution documented by the collections stewarded by the university archives, the media archives, which as many of you know is, is either the largest or the second largest media archive in Canada, just to name a few. We have, been, we have been working hard to forge partnerships, <coughs> I'm sorry, which will allow us to digitize more and more of these treasures to make them widely accessible. We need to work together, I believe, as archivists and librarians uh, to accomplish this. So I think it is a wonderful thing that we are opening this dialogue here at the University of Toronto, and I'm delighted, again, that the University of Toronto Libraries is a sponsor for this event. It's an exciting time for a community as knowledgeable and committed as that of, uh, this is a very exciting time for a community as knowledgeable and committed uh, as that of Canadian archivists. And I hope this summit will serve to spark a national conversation regarding the future of our documentary heritage in Canada. I'd also like to thank again all the sponsors and partners for making this important event possible. And again, to thank Ian Wilson for his leadership uh, and envision uh, bringing us to this day. Uh, and, and lastly, I'd like to thank all of you for coming today, including those of you, again, who are watching online on the live webcast.